Howdy doody, y'all. All right, so now in, there I am, in uh, this video, uh, we're gonna go just over the code and maybe any little details I forgot to mention. Um, this video is gonna be just the basic uh, UART. Uh, we'll be constantly checking the status register on our code to see if we receive data and all that stuff. And then in the next video, we're gonna implement the, um, the interrupts, all right? Um, let's see, all right, let's do it. And I am going to be using um, True Studio, just in case you're wondering what IDE this is. Okay, so first things first, like any peripheral, we're going to activate uh, the clocks for both uh, the peripheral itself and whatever uh, port the pins are. So the ports for this are UART are on, on, I mean the pins for it are on GPIO A, so we're gonna enable that clock and we're gonna enable the UART one itself. Easy enough, done that a million times. The next thing is the uh, alternate function remapping. Now, by default, the pins for UART one are on pin A, nine and 10. If for some reason there is a need to move those pins to somewhere else because it conflicts with other hardware, you can go ahead and do that. If you look, starting on page 175 of the reference manual, it talks about alternate function and remapping. If you look, if you go down here to page 180, you'll see um, some of the UART. Where's our UART one? Here's our UART one, and you see that default. Uh, the default mapping for them is TX on A9 and RX on A10. And again, if you want to remap it, then you would set a certain bit uh, right here on this uh, UART1 remap. If you set that bit to 1, then your UART TX and RX are going to be on port B. Obviously, at that point, then you have to change your, um, your clock that you activated, the port that you activated from A to B, obviously. And that this bit that you have to set is actually in the mapper register of the alternate function block. Where are we here? Mapper. Here we go. So as you can see here, bit bit two is the setting we're looking for. Well, we're not really going to do that, but I'm just showing you. So here's bit two. You are one remap, right? So when you put a zero here, you have the regular mapping, pin mapping. And when you put a one, you have the alternate uh, mapping. Should you need that, of course, right? So since we're using just the regular mapping, I'm going to go ahead and set pin A9 to alternate function push pull. Uh, I chose the 50 megahertz slew rate for it for no reason really. You could choose anything so as long as it's not input. So I did that. Now pin A, which is the RX pin, obviously that's an input, right? Because we're not controlling that pin. The external circuitry or whoever's transmitting on that line, they're the ones who are going to push that pu that pin high or low. So that's actually going to be an input floating. Now that just so happens to be the default state. It has to be it's the the state at reset. So we don't really have to set anything because it's already like that once you you turn on your microcontroller. So we don't have to do anything. Uh, for the RX pin. Uh, next we have setting the baud rate in our BRR register and I went over I went over that in the last video of how we derive this this value right here so you can check that out. Ultimately then we enable our receiver, we enable the transmitter and we enable the whole um, UART block itself and all of this obviously is in control register one. Now this program Here's our, here's our main uh, while loop. All it's doing is, again, whatever data we're getting, we're sending it right back. It's just an echo program. And what we're doing here is we're checking the status register if this RX and E flag is set. So we're checking to see if the RX is not empty. If it's not empty, it means we've received data. Then we get our data, right? We're storing into this variable temp. We get our data from the data register we store it in temp and then we put it back in the data register. Now remember that the data register, what I explained before, to us from a programming perspective, it seems like we're reading data from a register and then putting it right back. It seems like we're, you know, what's the point of that? But recall that when you are reading from the data register, 
hardware is kind of pushing you to a different uh, physical place in the microcontroller. And when you're writing to it, it's going uh, to a different place. Now, these are called shadow registers. So it's abstracted from, you know, from us. But in essence, when you're reading and writing to what seems to be the same register, you really are not. So keep that in mind. So that's why we're going to read our, our data and then put it right back to where we read it from to transmit it. And then obviously we're going to check the status register for our transmission to be complete. And that's about it. So I'm going to go ahead and compile this. Should be fine. No errors. And then we're going to upload it to the board. Again, no errors. We're going to clear that, clear that, reset the board. And again, whatever I send, this is my where I'm sending, and this is where I'm receiving. So it's almost instant, right? It's not going to be instant because it's real life here. <laughs> but whatever I'm sending, it's uh, transmitting it right back to me. And that's really it as far as uh, the code goes for a simple UART communication. Obviously, there's no interrupts. Now, the interrupt version is going to be the next video. And... Uh, it's, easy, it's going to be just as easy as this, all right? So we'll check that out in the next video. Again, if you have any questions, um, go to the blog. Everything is more thought out and written, and you can ask questions if, if maybe I forgot something or I just didn't make any sense on the video, all right, guys? All right, thanks.